In this lesson, we're going to learn about imaginary numbers. Before we get to that, let's review a few things. When we talk about square roots, we're wondering what number multiplied by itself equals the number underneath the square root sign. So the square root of 25 equals 5. We can also simplify or break down square roots that are not perfect square roots by looking for perfect square roots that are factors of that number. Let's take a moment to review our perfect square roots. We have the square root of 4, square root of 9, square root of 16, and square root of 25. We have the square root of 36, the square root of 49, the square root of 64, the square root of 81, and the square root of 100, and, and so on. These are perfect square roots. Well, 27 isn't divisible by 4, but it is divisible by 9. So we can break down the square root of 27 into the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. Now this is helpful because the square root of 9 equals a plain old 3. And then the square root just tags along. So the square root of 27 equals 3 times the square root of 3. Now when we take the square root of a negative number, well let's see here. 9 times 9 equals positive 81, so that doesn't work. Negative 9 times negative 9 equals positive 81, so that doesn't work either. So when we try to think of a number that multiplies by itself to equal negative 81, we can't figure anything out. Kind of the same idea with this equation. If we're trying to solve x squared equals negative 81, we're trying to figure out a number that when we multiply it by itself equals negative 81, but we're running into the same problem because 9 times 9 is positive 81, and negative 9 times negative 9 equals positive 81. So you might remember your teacher telling you that there is no real solution. At the time, you might have wondered, well, why can't I just say there's no solution? Why, why do I have to say no real solution? And that's because there is a way to move forward if we move beyond the real numbers. And that brings us to the imaginary number i. Now i equals the square root of negative 1. Now closely related to that, we have i squared equals negative 1. And that's actually a definition right here. Mathematicians have def defined i squared to equal negative 1. So let's see that, how that will help us with this equation, x squared equals negative 81. We're trying to think of some number that when you multiply it by itself equals negative 81. Well, let's try multiplying the number 9i by itself. And we'll see what happens here. All right, so when we square 9i, we have 9 times 9, which is 81, and i times i, which is i squared. Now, i squared is defined to be negative 1. So this really equals 81 times negative 1, which equals negative 81. So we just figured out that 9i squared equals negative 81. So we solved the equation. x equals 9i. Because when we squared 9i, we got negative 81. You might be wondering why we bother with imaginary numbers. After all, the solution to this equation is still imaginary, right? Well, it turns out that engineers and scientists use imaginary numbers to make certain calculations a lot easier. The reason can be seen if we plot the real numbers on a horizontal axis and the imaginary numbers on a vertical axis. So let me put just 1 over here and, and negative 1 over here. I'm going to put i up here and negative i over here. Now, when you dive deeper into imaginary numbers, you will learn about their circular or cyclic nature. Let's go around a few more times here just to emphasize this fact. And we're going to see this again later. Um, and circles help us understand waves. Now, when we think of waves, I'm thinking sound, electricity, earthquakes, 
that sounds pretty down to earth. So let's start learning how to harness the power of I. Let's start with simplifying. So we have the square root of negative 16. I'm going to break that down into the square root of 16 times the square root of negative 1. Now, previously, we learned that the square root of negative 1 equals i. That was up here. So I'm going to put a star by this here. The square root of negative 1 equals the imaginary number i. So we can replace the square root of negative 1 with an i. So this equals the square root of 16 times i. So we got rid of that negative square root there. Now the square root of 16 equals 4, so this equals 4i. So the square root of negative 16 equals 4i. Well, how about this one? Square root of negative 64, well, that's the square root of 64 times the square root of negative 1, which will equal 8i. Because the square root of 64 equals 8, and the square root of negative 1 equals i. Now let's just throw in an extra negative sign. Let's just keep track of things, everything in its place. So we have the square root of negative 49, and we have this negative sign out, outside. So we want the opposite of the square root of negative 49. So this will equal negative, that's this negative sign, the square root of 49 times the square root of negative 1 which will equal, we've got our negative sign there, negative seven times i, or negative seven i. So that negative sign just tagged along. We didn't really have to do much with it other than keep track of it. Here we have a sim similar problem. We have negative square root of 100 times the square root of negative one, which will equal negative 10 times i. Now, when I see a square root of a negative number, I like to start by just pulling that i out. So instead of writing the square root of negative 1, I can just say the square root of negative 50 equals i times the square root of 50. Now let's work on breaking down the square root of 50. We can divide it by 25. i times the square root of 25 times the square root of 2 square root of 25 equals 5. So now we have i times 5 times the square root of 2. Now let's simplify this, how people are used to seeing it. We write it like this. We have 5i times the square root of 2. So the square root in a situation like this comes at the end. The reason why we don't write it like this 5 times the square root of 2 times i is because then it sometimes is hard to tell if the i is underneath the square root sign or not. So it's not wrong to write it like this, but we really prefer to put the i in front of the square root sign. So we don't have to wonder if it's under the square root sign or not. Oh, here's a similar problem. Square root of negative 200. So I'm going to bring the, the negative square root. So right off the bat, I'm going to rewrite that as i times the square root of 200. Now I think to myself, is there a per perfect square root that divides into 200? There is. 100 divides into 200. So this is equal to i times the square root of 100 times the square root of 2. All right, the square root of 100 equals 10. So this is i times 10 times the square root of 2. Now let's rewrite it in the order that we like it. We put the regular numbers, then the I, and then the i, and then the square roots at the end. So it'd be 10 i times the square root of 2. Looks pretty similar here. We have negative square root of 72. I'm going to pull that i out. That gives us i times the square root of positive 72. And I think of a perfect square root that divides into 72. Now, you might think of a different one in this case but I'm going to start by dividing by 9. So we have i times the square root of 9 times the square root of 8, because 9 times 8 equals 72. The square root of 9 turns into a regular old 3. So this equals i times 3 times the square root of 8. 
Well, before we stop, we need to think, well, is there a perfect square root that divides into 8? And there is, 4. So this is equal to i times 3 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. So I broke down the 8 into 4 times 2. And that's helpful because the square root of 4 equals a plain old 2. i times 3 times 2, because the square root of 4 equals 2. And then this square root of 2 just tags along. And then finally, we pause to write our answer how we like it. 3 times 2 is 6. So we have 6i times the square root of 2. How about this one? Let's see, this equals i times the square root of 32. Because remember, i equals the square root of negative 1. And we break down 32. Now, I'm going to start with 4 times 8. You might have thought of um, something a little bit better than that. But let's, uh, that's a good place to start here. So we have i times the square root of 4 times the square root of 8. The uh, square root of 4 equals 2. So this is equal to i times 2 times the square root of 8. But 8, like we saw here, uh, can be broken down further because 4 times 2 equals 8, and 4 is a perfect square root. So we have i times 2, that's this 2 right here, times the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. So that equals i times 2 times, well, the square root of 4 equals 2 times the square root of 2. And now we'll finally write it like how we want it. 2 times 2 is 4. So we have 4i times the square root of 2. All right, here's something a little different. There's a whole number in front of the square root. Well, you just need to remember that this means 12 times the square root of 4. So let's see, we have 12. I'm going to pull that the square root of negative 1 out, so that means this is 12i times the square root of 4. Well, the square root of 4 equals 2. So this equals 12i time times 2, which equals 24i. Here's another one like that. Let's see, we have a negative square root. So I'm going to pull that i out and turn that 64 into a positive 64. And square root of 64 equals 8. 5i times 8, which equals 40i. Now when you work with i, remember that i is a number. So it's not really a, a variable. It's not a variable. It equals the square root of negative 1. All right, here we have a 10 in front of the of a square root, a negative square root. So let's start by taking care of that negative sign. So i equals the square root of negative 1. So this is equal to 10i times the square root of positive 20. Now I ask myself, well, are there any perfect square roots that are factors of 20? And there are, 4. So this will equal 10i times the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. Well, the square root of 4 equals 2. So this is 10i times 2 times the square root of 5. And now we'll just multiply 10 times 2 and get 20i times the square root of 5. Here's another one like that. So we have a negative square root. And so right off the bat, I'm going to factor out that square root of negative 1 and rewrite this as 3i times the square root of positive 27. Now, 9 divides into 27, so we have to keep going here. So I have 3i times the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. The square root of 9 equals 3, so this is 3i times 3 times the square root of 3. Finally, we multiply the regular 3s and get 9i times the square root of 3. Now we won't dwell on this too long right now, but when we have a fraction, we can't leave i in the denominator. It's just one of those things in math that doesn't look right. Now, luckily, there's an easy way to take care of it in a situation like this. Since we know that 
let's see, i equals the square root of negative 1. And i squared is defined to equal negative 1. Well, I can multiply the numerator and denominator both by i. That leaves us with 5i over 7i squared. Now that's helpful because i squared equals negative 1, getting rid of the i's in the denominator. So this is 5i over 7 times negative 1, because i squared equals negative 1. Or in other words, 5i over negative 7. Still looks a little funny like that, though. Let's put the negative sign up front. Negative 5i over 7. All right, let's try one more like that. So we'll multiply the top and bottom by i. We're allowed to do that because we're, as long as you multiply the top and bottom by the same thing, we're really just multiplying by 1. So that gives us 2i over 9i squared. i squared equals negative 1. So this equals 2i over negative 9, because 9 times negative 1 is negative 9. Looks a little funny like that with the negative sign in the denominator, so let's move it up front and get negative 2i over 9. In this video, we introduced the imaginary number i and learned how it equals the square root of negative 1 and how i squared equals negative 1. Hopefully these examples have been helpful. This is Mr. Ela signing off.